right, we have a very special episode of Cosmic Road today. We are joined by Anita Ekonen, a great remote viewer. Welcome to the show, Anita. Hi. <laughs> we are hoping to do a series of remote viewings uh, on the channel uh, if this goes well. Uh, it's been a dream of mine to, to have a remote viewer available to the channel and uh, you know, to, to collaborate with uh, on, on a series of viewings. And Anita is making my dreams come true, so thank you so much. Uh, I have given her a task, a, a blind task. I just gave her a sequence of numbers. She has no idea uh, what those numbers are are targeted on. She, she's totally blind to the target and has done a remote viewing on it. Uh, are you ready to hear what the target is? Uh, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, 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 and Anita has sent me her results. Uh, so I have her results. So it's not like she has a bunch of, uh, you know, various results lying around her computer. Uh, and she's just picking the one after I tell her what the target is. She sent me her results. I haven't looked at them. She wants me to be surprised uh, by her results. And I've honored that. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what you came, came up with. Uh, the target is... Um, uh, the Nimitz USO, uh, I, the, the tasking was go to the Nimitz Tic Tac UAP event of 2004 with commander David Fravor and company observe the large submerged object that uh, David Fravor described and describe it, its relation to the Tic Tac in other craft where it came from, uh, where it went after the incident, and who is operating it. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> what, what, can you can you just say that again? I loved hearing it. I've been working <laughs> on this for 48 hours. This is <laughs> Sure, yeah, oh yeah, my God, okay. The, you uh, can't imagine the relief. I did good. I, okay, I did I, not I fail I can't session. wait to get into your results. <sighs> Okay, please read it again. This was awesome to hear it. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, go wanna... to the go to the Nimitz Tic Tac UAP event of 2004 with Commander David Fravor and company. Observe the large submerged object that Fravor described and describe it. Its relation to the Tic Tac and other craft, where it came from, where it went after the incident, and who is operating it. So are you saying there are two crafts, like one is in the water and some other one is... Yeah, well, there are, there are actually supposedly a whole bunch of craft because it was a <laughs> week-long was, week incident. Uh, and, and there were uh, up to 100 craft described going uh, from sea level to uh, space in like a second or two. And then there was the big submerged object. We don't know if the Tic Tacs came from the submerged object or how they were interacting with it. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's where you come in. Tell us, awesome. tell us all about it. Take, take us through it. Let me just tell your viewers, <laughs> our viewers, you're my viewers too. <laughs> so I contacted Jack saying, let's do like UFO remote viewing sessions and find out what's, what these things are. But I told him, just throw in a bunch of things in the target pool that aren't UFOs, because you can't just give me a UFO every time, because then I'll just know it's a UFO. So as I'm doing this session, I'm thinking, it could be a UFO, but it could also not be. So when I'm getting this UFO stuff, I'm getting really nervous in the session, but I just stay true to my data. So woohoo, <laughs> I got something. <laughs> Nice, um, nice. I said, can't wait. Are you? Are you yeah, and uh, I did. Uh, I compiled a <laughs> list. I compiled a list of ten targets. Uh, one, there was a Joker in the deck that didn't have anything to do with UFOs or anything anomalous. Uh, and in in those ten targets, uh, the nine that were anomalous, there are a, <gasps> there are a range of different targets. You know, UFOs and other anomalous uh, targets. Uh, and uh, there were, I think, only a few like actual UFO stuff in there. Um, and this was one of them. And I didn't know which target was going to be chosen. I used a random number generator uh, to pick the target. Uh, and then I used another random number generator to generate the string of uh, numbers uh, that would be the actual task. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so, all right. Uh, take us through it, Anita. Can you see my paper? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I almost faint here. Can... Uh, 
Can you imagine how stressful it is to spend 48 hours on a target and think it's going to be broadcast on someone's channel? And what if I fail? And what if I'm just making stuff up because I know it could be a UFO? But <sighs> I survived. It. I, I did good. Did we got you a UFO. It. I captured it. We're going to... So I created a really long full text report, which is... I think 12 pages or something like that could be 20 where I just write everything down. I did take the time and care to craft a summary for Jack and for our viewers so that it, ha it captures the essential data without repeating stuff and, with and just removing the things we don't really need to look at. So, and I will show you all the drawings. It gets really cool. So what I had was I had a flattened disc uh, I'll just read from the report and tell you at the same time. A flattened disc, the exterior of the... Sur oh, wow. The outside of this flying object that I had was so beautiful. It was smooth and glossy, and it looked like a mirror. You could see the clouds and the blue sky reflecting on it, and I had the impression that it's almost like it could use it as a camouflage, like using a mirror to show what's around it so that you don't see it. It was so reflective, a perfect mirror image, gorgeous. But when I touched on the outside, it was smooth, but also scratchy, which surprised me. Um, the top of the object had this bulging dome shape on the top center, which appeared to be glass in material. It was hollow inside the structure and it contains mechanics. Now, interesting is that this craft uses resonance. It resonates with itself and that is how it is able to move quicker, whatever that means. I realize that that's some kind of a technology we don't have. It had some hanging cables under it, and it was contained inside of a yellow blinking light. The function of this flattened disc flying craft is to be an information recording device. It is a communication device. I found things like radio telecom devices, telecommunications, radio receptors. It was huge in size, this one that I found. And at least one part of its exterior has an impenetrable armor. There's also a blinking red light on the outside. Under this craft is a staircase, which one could use to go inside or outside of the craft from the underneath. I have a lot of data and details. I spent 48 hours on this one. Inside this craft are seats. Now these seats were interesting because there's a narrow gap and inside of this gap is this groove with an open top and several cushions, padded cushions lined in this gap. Several people can sit in there in this narrow gap by squeezing themselves in there and sitting lined up. You really have to squeeze in there and this cushion is really tight around you. So you're really tucked in there. I've never seen a seats like that. And this cushion was a pale, almost white color. I'm going to blow your mind away with this amount of detail, Jack. You've never seen anything like this. <laughs> blow. <laughs> this thing is a flying mechanism and it collects and gathers data, which it feeds into its optics sensors. Now, the thing is, I saw it go to water. This craft went to water and it drinks the water up. And I write it in my full text report. It looked supernatural. It was like this water is like flying through the air in a way that isn't natural. And it drinks up the water. So I think it's interesting. This was seen at the water. Yeah, it was yeah. picking it up. Yeah, UFOs often interact with the water, and that's not yeah. the, you know, sometimes they'll drink water and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So this craft had water inside of it, or a liquid. And outside of this flattened disc, 
underneath it, not under the center, but a little to the side is a box. And this box is a gas chamber. See, I went everywhere, all around, inside, outside of this thing. And it has a pump, which picks up a liquid. Um, at the back of this structure, I found a large ring, which has many black round things. And from this emanates a strong heat or fire. It could also be just a heat. And I saw this craft, it spins around its own vertical axis. Meaning if it's standing still, you could imagine a vertical line through its center, it would spin around itself in one place. I saw that. There was a dome on the top of it, but there was also an equal dome on the bottom of it. And I write, making it look like a flying saucer. <laughs> And the reason for having these two domes, one on the top and one on the bottom and with a disc in the middle, RV told me nobody really knows why it has that, but now we know. The reason for having those two domes is because you get a spherical chamber inside and you can fit a sphere inside. This is the reason it has the top and bottom domes to fit a sphere inside. Makes Nobody sense. knew that before. Now we know that. And it has a steering mechanism, which is oily. And I saw, I will show you a picture very soon of what this flattened disc looks like. A part of it is rotating around its own vertical axis as if it's standing still, but rotates around itself. And it does that by having a bed of oil. It's the part that turns around itself because the whole thing wasn't turning at this point. It had a bed of oil under it, kind of like a cushion because you can't just put two solid things and start moving because that would be friction, but it has a bed of oil there so that it can rotate around itself. And the exterior surface, I saw big letters of text. Hmm. But I didn't really read it. So here's my first drawing. This is the first drawing. These are the first shapes I get from looking at this number. So I don't really yet know what I'm looking at. I have this metal can, which is orange brown initially. This turns out to be something called a resonance chamber, which turns out to be merely a component of the flattened disc. There's a road underneath and the red, red on the left side indicates life form. We also see some proportions, how small the little red life forms are on the ground there. You can see that we are dealing with some big structures. And this uh, cage mesh, you can maybe see some very tiny little red dots inside of the cage, which has the black and brown. Those are interesting. We will get back to them. Those are some kind of life form, which are not human. <laughs> They're called friction makers. We'll get back to them. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, this is the first time Jack is seeing any of this as well. <laughs> um, I saw this metal can hoisted up on this uh, cage tower. This all turns out to be then a uh, resonance chamber. This is just the first drawing. We see a red light shining on the side of our can. Can basically means we found a, a metal can basically means I found a metal container of some kind. We, I didn't have better names at this point. Let's just move to the next one. Um, so this is my second picture. Um, I was looking closer at the metal can, which turned out to have this widening, flattening outward. As you can see, it's not just really a can. Once you start patting it down, you see that it has this kind of an extension and flattening. You look like you want to say something there. <laughs> no, 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 or I'm just, just take, taking it all in, <laughs> taking it all in. Okay, so I, as you can read here, there is a spark, there's a liquid nearby. 
Now, the resistance push and the push downward are interesting. It was as if air around it becomes thicker and pushes on it. We will get back to that. It uses it for navigation and propulsion. A sound emission, this thing emits a sound. Now here I'm just looking closer and just probing around. Here we start to see the flattened disc a bit better. And um, yeah, this is me uh, doing what I call, I think I did paper tracing here. Paper tracing is when I see some kind of a shape from the target signal, and it's just one blur or a blob of something. So I write it, I, I draw it, and I start just feeling outwards and patting here and there and just drawing what I feel coming out as extensions. So this is still a bit distorted, um, but we're getting some data, we're getting some more shapes. This all started in the beginning as a can, and now I'm just feeling it around to see what's the actual shape. So we're finding these interesting shapes here. Um, some glass, some heat, I wrote, chairs inside, heat emission. There's a clock inside, blinking yellow light, impenetrable armor, and so forth. So let's just... Well, what is the, the funnel where it says blinking? Uh, there's a, there's a, a funnel and a grid. Uh, what, yeah. What's that all about? And like a little sun above it? What was that? Yeah, it had this yellow blinking light. And turns out our entire craft was inside of a large yellow or orange light. Um, I just saw a blinking yellow light and I saw it as if, if this thing moves in the sky at night when the night the sky is black, it would be seen as a yellow blinking light. Okay. Like this. Yeah. Um, the funnel, I kind of, I had this funnel initially, and then later I kind of lost track of the funnel element, which is this cage that opens up because I started looking at these other pieces a bit more. Um, but I think it was the, turned out to be the same thing as the resonance chamber. And this is the next picture. What, what, what was that structure with like the horn sticking out of it? It was like a... Yeah, yeah, those were some side wings, and those turned out to be, those would, see, in the beginning, it's like I have a blur, just a blob. I have to start feeling it around, what's, what's the exact detailed shapes. So I keep coming across these things, and I'm not sure, these, this, these spiky things are either turned out to be the flat disc portion of the craft, that I would need to continue feeling it out. Or I also found blades like this inside the craft. And these blades can slide. And when they slide, it moves a resonance chamber tube, which is inside the craft. See, I went all in there. <laughs> okay. okay. This, is still, this is still early stages, you know, it's still a bit messy and blurry just feeling things, getting bits, pieces, finding, oh, there's something that goes out here, it's sharp and it kind of curves, then I would draw it how I got it. Not necessarily yet knowing how things connect and what goes where, you know? It's early stages still, but you see I already have UFO, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So next picture, um, here you have the funnel again that you asked about. This time you see it directly underneath the UFO thing. Um, I'd really have to refer to my text. The, the big U shape is a magnet. It's a U shaped horseshoe shaped magnet and it spins around and we know what that means. I got so excited when I saw that because I don't remember from physics, that will either create an electric current or electric um, field or electromagnetic emission, something like that. It will generate elect electrical activity phenomena. When you, whenever you have a moving magnet, it will stimulate electric behavior and you can get electromagnetic behavior. It's really cool stuff. So whenever you see a moving magnet, it's reason to get really excited. 
um i had i had two two what i thought were celestial bodies colliding into each other i've drawn that and i've seen a truck with things that look like missiles at the back and this is still just drawings <laughs> Um, let's just get, I've shown you a little, I still have the best drawings to come, okay, let's save okay. some of them. Uh, let's get back to reading a bit. So we have the flattened disc and the orange light, um, the structure is inside of a bright burning orange light or that the light is inside the structure. This orange light feeds monitoring processes and is a library of information. Then I get words like channels maneuvering, steering, optical sensors, mechanistic models, how to use a steam engine better, ley lines, photon emission, steering mechanism. And the resonance chamber glows yellow. And there was this steady humming sound. And when I heard that, I instantly thought, this has to be a UFO, because you always hear about UFOs having this humming sound. Have you heard about that? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I heard it. This one has the humming sound. And we hear a music or a sound around this craft. A loud tone is emanated as this big orange light is being lowered slowly downwards. And I saw some metallic shrapnels, which are several pieces of bent metal. They were soft and that you could shrivel them up like aluminum tin foil except not as much. You can't really shrivel them up a lot, but quite a lot. So it wasn't really like any other metal we've seen. So it was a very interesting metal. Mm. Yeah, you, know, you, get that, you get that sometimes with the, they call it the memory metal. Uh, yeah. you know, that, that comes up in some UFO crashes, which is, which is, I don't know if that's the same uh, material or not, but it sure sounds like it. It was like, I haven't seen a metal that can be bent and disfigured so softly without it being aluminum foil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was interesting. And this metal shrapnel had this orange, brownish, brass kind of color almost. Ignition fuel. Ignition fuel liquid is contained inside the craft. And I saw that there is a liquid fuel which gets sprayed or injected. And this fuel has a gummy texture, so it's viscous like an oil and it's combustible for the flame, which made me think it cannot be extraterrestrial because that sounds very human technology yeah, to have a combustion yeah. engine, yeah. The craft dunks itself into water and picks up liquid. Chemical particles feed a burning fire as an ignition fuel. That made me think human craft, most likely. Radio sender. So this funnel, now we get to this funnel, the cage looking thing, the long cage. Um, it is a signaling tube. It draws radio waves. It is a monitoring device. Has a resistance like resistors in electronics. The bottom of it has a fuel ignition mechanism. There are monitoring clocks, activation mechanisms. There's a liquid picked up, which is needed to make a steam and the steam ignites clocks. The clocks are counters. There's a signaling system which emits radio waves. It's a radio sender and was moving in a straight line trajectory against the black sky with a yellow blinking light radio listening device, an intercepting device. I get the sense it can pick up on communications to listen in on communications. It contains several flat brown rectangles, which contain films that are professionally made photographs. These are like books, like stacks of electronic images. The data is tracked down to earth or sent down to earth where it is collected and received. A radio emission device emits television broadcast signal, which to me makes it sound like a video transmission. Hmm. Now at this stage, I was thinking, is this like a satellite which is broadcasting down television programs? But it's also a, 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 a device that listens. It intercepts communications. It takes photographs and film and it stores this information, but it can also broadcast this data back down to earth. 
So are you thinking this uh, UFO uh, or whatever it was is some part of like a spying operation? It could be. Like that's the purpose, the function of this structure was all of this data reception, but it can also transmit data. It's a radio, it's a, it's a what did I write that it is? It's function. Mm, I wrote somewhere clearly. Yeah, function is to be an information recording device, communication device. So this thing was not, its function is not, for instance, transport for people or weapon. It is also not a weapon, not a weapon. It is, it, it, it listens, it receives communication, kind of like spying. Yeah, that's the sense I had. And it also stores information. Possibly. We're going to get to that. It could be a short-term storage. Okay. It has a problem okay. with remembering things. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right. UFO with memory problems. I can relate. <laughs> Collision. I already described and sh showed you the drawing where the two big celestial bodies collided. Resonance chamber. Now this resonance chamber is a hollow pipe inside of our structure. I've also seen it go out from the structure and leave the structure like a separate flying craft. I've also seen it docking on top of the flying saucer craft. It's like this tube sat there so that the tube could receive liquid from this flying saucer craft. So I saw them separating and docking as well as being together. Now, this resonance chamber, when I saw it, it reminded me of the stories of the cigar-shaped UFOs. Just from the shape, it's like this tube. It's called the resonance chamber. Now we're getting into the heart and soul of this, of the of the tubular craft, at least, which is a component here we got really close to, to its very essence. It's not just a hollow tube and it's, it's really lovely. Oh, I also had, I didn't put it in the summary. I have it in the full report, which you received. This resonance chamber, which is a hollow pipe, it is very kind, very friendly. It is old and ancient. So you're, you're getting a personality from the resonance yeah. chamber and the resonance chamber itself is a separate craft or can be a separate craft from the, 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 the saucer shaped craft. Yeah. And it, but it's, it's alive in some way. Well, objects also have a character and a personality always because let's say you have this tube shaped craft, which I initially had gave the name of can turn out to be, I turned out to call it later resonance chamber, which is nicer. <laughs> Initially it was called a can before I really knew more about it. Um, since it doesn't cause any harm to anyone, it, remote viewing can tell you that it is kind and friendly because it feels, it has no intention or maybe ability to cause any destruction or pain or harm, then an element, even though it's an object, can come across as being kind and friendly. It it does like that in remote viewing. Things can be described. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, you yeah. can interrupt. And, and, um, and, no, no. No. Okay. Okay. Because that is something you get in uh, contact experiences sometimes, as experiencers mm -hmm. who interact with ships sometimes say that it has a consciousness of its own. Mm, interesting. Maybe it does but I didn't pick up. I can't say it didn't then. So this, this can, resonance chamber, it is a hollow tube, which is a resonance chamber. We're gonna talk all about resonance on this one. It remembers nothing. It has no memory capacity. This came up all the time. For some reason, it was so important. RV kept telling me time and time again, this, structure doesn't remember anything it has no memory maybe maybe that simply is to say that there's no data storage long-term storage 
or such, or that it, I don't know really what it means. I didn't dive into it so much. Um, it has music inside from moving parts. So this could imply that the sound or music, sound emission and hum from our craft could be due to moving parts, could be. Although it could also be part of the resonance, just that's just me speculating. But there is a sound, a music. A music, I we, like that. Now, here's the thing that made me think this can't be a human craft. So it's a bit undecided at times. What is this? We can move this resonance chamber, which is the hollow tube craft. We can move this with our mind and it does not resist to being moved. It can be moved with mind. And it doesn't object to it. It doesn't resist. It allows itself to be moved with the mind. Now, when Someone's you say mind, move, do you mean like piloted? What, what, what is moving? Yeah. It can okay. be shifted in position with mind. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Neat. Neat. Yeah. 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 And I believe this data. I don't doubt it any more than any other data here. <laughs> it was, and I touched this tube on the outside. I was touching it and it was oily on the outside. That was a surprise. Um, one end of this tube has a blunt glass dome. This tube receives liquid from the flattened disc, the saucer UFO. And this tube has a lot of moving small parts that need oil. It is made mostly out of glass, out of optics materials. It makes sounds. It also had a bulge on the top, which then reminds me of the bulge on top of the saucer. It could be kind of the same. It has a camera and an optic lens. A, a follows... camera that we would recognize, like a human camera or? <sighs> Maybe. These technologies felt human, but not all of them. I didn't really investigate to find the camera or to look around. What I just, it just said, there's this optical camera. I didn't really search for it or see it. I okay. was told it's there. Okay. Uh, it follows and tracks movements with the camera optic lens. So here again, this thing that it's observing and it records, it's looking at things and makes video and photographs and other recordings of what it's looking at. Um, it can be turned around swiftly. Optics cables near the end that has the glass dome. Yeah, and this, this tube will had a slight bend. So on one end, it's kind of bent upwards. It's not a perfectly straight tube, turns out. Um, it can be steered. It can be set on a track path. So it can be given a, a path to travel in and it can be steered. Now, okay, so, all right. Um... How big was the tube? Do you have any idea how big this thing was? Huge. Huge. Because okay, I, so so not the Tic Tac. I don't know. The Tic Tac. This is thing probably, was huge. The, the Tic Tac is about the same size as, as a fighter jet. So this is this sounds like it was bigger than that. Because when you say tube and you know, you know the Tic Tac we'll is see. kind of kind of tubular. We'll see. Okay. We'll okay. see. Okay. Okay. Because... Oh, keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. There is a metallic chime resonance inside. A loud song music chime is heard in the air around it. It is being dragged by cables. It goes toward resonances and then it stays there and it resonates with it. It travels on resonance chimes and chime is a sound. It's so beautiful this tube because the way it travels has to do with resonance and sound. It's part of how it travels. That's something really beautiful that we humans, at least officially, we don't have that. That is so cool. <clears throat> then we have riding on air currents. So the flattened disc uses hot air to move with, which puzzled me because I was thinking if this is a UFO, why would it be using air currents 
because if it goes to outer space, presumably, there's no air there to travel with. But that's what I saw. So the floating, <clears throat> the floating disc, which was hanging in the sky, it can be moved vertically up and down by means of wind currents. I saw air sucked into it from the outside. It writes on pockets of air. It stays afloat that way. And it all makes perfect sense. I'll just sum it up. We could read it here, but um, <clears throat> it can create hot air underneath it, outside of this craft, the flattened disk. And since hot air rises, the craft rises with the hot air that's under it. It sounds simple and perfect, but that's what I saw. Or this sounds counterintuitive. If it has hot air above it, the hot air above it will push it down. So huh. it seems like it's so if the hot air is under it, it goes up. If the hot air is above it, it goes down. That's what I saw. That's wild. That's wild. <clears throat> and I saw it moving in a circular trajectory really fast. Yeah. Pink resonance magnetism. I saw pink color. It turns out the pink was magnetism. Magnetism is an important part of this structure. Um, so we already discussed the U-shaped magnet, which rotated. And this U-shaped magnet rotates around its vertical axis and emits a wave or a fluctuation whose intensity can be varied. Within this emitted fluctuation, time is altered. I went I I was so excited when I got that because we I don't think we have that I don't think we have this science time was altered the variable of time wasn't linear in that it could be changed can it go uh, outside of space and time I, I don't know I just saw that with this magnetic mechanism Time was altered because of in within this emitted fluctuation from from the magnet from the rotating magnet. Time was altered. Huh. So so beautiful. So this magnetism exists very much so inside our saucer craft. Okay, so we have the la the the final section of my summary, which is the strangest one. This is strange stuff. Lay, lay it I, on me, Anita. <laughs> lay it on me. Now, as I was, now this is all, this whole text here is a summary from the full text report, which is massive. But I have all of the relevant data in here. I didn't really leave anything out. So now is when it gets interesting. <laughs> as I was writing this summary or compiling it, actually. I was thinking, oh boy, I just have to put in what I, I just have to put the data that I had. I can't explain it. It's weird. It is what it is. The friction makers. Let's see. Let's go back to pictures. I have a drawing of them. So we looked at this one already. <clears throat> Here's the next picture. And here we have the friction makers. He's got so like tentacles see... for feet. I didn't, I didn't really squeeze their toes to, to see what, what that's made of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here you see, first you see the big yellow orb, which it, I think is light, and you see the craft inside it, which is our saucer, the flying saucer flattened disc. Um, you see it inside there. And you see that I've really patted it around, so I found that it extends like two wings to the sides, kind of. You see another drawing of it. To the left, which where I wrote the gas chamber and the staircase, that's the same structure as inside the yellow orb. And you see the pink, all of the pink you see in three, in four places here is the magnetism. And you see that this kind of orange brown can goes out from, leaves uh, the flattened disc. You see that with a purple arrow. And also drew how the magnetism, the, the pink magnetism was with purple arrows can go up and down. So it's a moving magnetism. Um, 
Yeah, and you see how it drinks up this liquid. Really strange to pull up water so that it's like picks up this arm of water. So you also see our flattened disc drawn on the top left with pink bits on the inside of the flat part. Am I going too fast? <laughs> no, no, I'm just I'm just thinking. You know, I don't know if it's relevant at all, but you know, with the the tic tac, you're supposed to have those two little prongs off of it. Uh, really? We don't know what the, yeah, the Tic Tac has two but little. Drew but I drew that. You drew that. You drew <laughs> that. <laughs> you did. You did. Are you kidding? No, no. Now, I mean, I don't know if what you're describing is the Tic Tac or the USO or, or you know, what. Oh but, but yeah, 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 that's right. Are you serious? No, I've yes, heard I'm, of I'm the Tic Tac. I've heard of the Tic Tac. I can only the recall. The Tic Tac has two little prongs off of it. Downward? What was that? Do they go downward? I I think so. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. Sorry uh, to get excited, but this is oh, really cool. I've heard of the okay, tic tac. Well, when, when we're done, I'll, I'll look. I'll see if it goes up or down. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of the tic tac. I'm. I must have seen a picture, but I've never really looked closer. I didn't know it has to. See, I've drawn it on this on both. Um, the, the flattened disc, as I came to call it, I've drawn it once inside of the yellow and once to the left of it where I wrote gas chamber and staircase. On both of them, you see those thin, two thin gray things. And those can slide. They can slide. And what I saw is that when they slide, it moves the, the tube. The tube moves. When the tube is docked, is on or in the disc craft, when those when those blades slide, it moves the tube. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to get so excited, but yeah, no, of course, of course, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The corroboration, so, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Love. So, yeah, so so the interesting thing on the on the left side, which has these tubes and the pink and the bendy legs, that's one of our friction makers. That's one of the weirdest things I ever saw in a remote viewing in my life. <laughs> I'm just gonna describe respectfully the data. I, no opinion from me or so that's that's how I would draw them. It's probably not it's not a complete drawing. I should have probed more, but I was mainly focused focusing on the craft. So just like if you draw something in remote viewing and you haven't patted down and investigated every little piece of it, there could be something there that you missed because you don't see everything at the same time. You have to work on it. You have to explore all the areas. So that's what I had so far. It could be intermediary. It could be that if I put more work on it, it could continue to evolve. But that's how I would draw them. Um, so let's read about it. Um, also, I show you um, on the left top, you see little pink bits inside of the flat part. That's where they are housed. That's how small they are um, compared to the size. They're even smaller. They're very small inside our craft. These the, things the, the are beings, tiny. The beings are small. Yeah, and they're and, they're stored yeah. inside these, of this. Are, are these living beings or are these biological androids? What, what what are these things? Let's go. Let's get into it. Okay. Okay. All right. Friction makers. Inside of the resonance chamber, which is our hollow tube shaped component, are many tiny life forms called friction makers. In this session, we also call them passengers as well as hostages. Hmm. They are not biological life forms. They do not have any biological tissue that I could recognize. They do not have a brain organ, and they do not have blood. They have no brains to think with. They cannot activate their own mind, and so they feel hectic due to outside sources. 
they require a sugar water liquid in order to have power. They don't have a mouth to ingest the liquid, but they absorb or soak in the liquid. They eat from puddles. Where a face would be, and also on their hands and feet, is a white fur of hair fibers. These fibers are like cables. There are no real legs, but at least two upward bent parts. Where the hands would be, it's like thick mittens of white fur, but it's not dense, it was full of holes. It looks like they were wearing white body suits, like jumpsuits. So this white fur, which was a type of cables, except that they are thin and many, would be on the outside of a white bodysuit and not directly on a body, if they have a body inside of a suit, perhaps. So, so just, yellow... to, just, to, just to clarify, were they wearing clothes or were they not wearing clothes? My impression was that these things were wearing a white jumpsuit. Okay, okay. So this, this like fur a, is coming out of their, their jumpsuit. On The fur would be on top of the suit, I think. Okay, okay. I didn't look very close because I was focusing on the craft. I didn't look, I, I didn't give these things as much attention as they deserved, but I still got a lot of data. I did look at them, of course, several times. Um, there were many yellow buttons on the front of the suit and I saw one of them pressing its buttons, and they, it did that to count. So on their gear, on the suit, on the chest, buttons, yellow buttons, and by pressing them, it was counting something. Any idea what? No, I did not pry. Okay. I did. I could have taken a look, but I didn't. There's just when I was doing this one, there are there's like a hundred. There's so many things to look at yeah you could have can, gone I, off on so many different tangents yes if you had wanted i couldn't to. Yeah. possibly do yeah. a full investigation of everything even though i try so yeah yeah of course of course i try yeah yeah uh, a cable connects to the head which i drew and another umbilical tube connects to the gear on the belly and feeds them with information let me show you the um so you see the cable connects to the head. And there's another cable, the umbilical tube, which connects to their gear, which again implies that they are wearing a suit, on the belly. And this umbilical tube feeds them with information. <laughs> they have eyes, they can look around, they can see. Their face, when I touched the face and their hands, it felt gummy, like gum. And they had, they had a really strong smell. First time when I smelled it, it smelled strong like a man's cologne. Hmm. And the second time when I smelled it, it was a really strong smell like roses, perfume, very fragrant things. The outside surface of them is sticky and wet. I've also seen, but I took it out of the summary because I can't put everything, that the forehead was dripping wet and they were wet. Huh. And the pink magnetism is over or in them. They were squabbling, like chattering, talking, like squabble, almost like ducks, that kind of a sound. And they were passing down information by doing that. There was so much activity. They hate each other. They were kicking each other. They were, they were biting each other. That's not good. No. And one thing I took out of the summary, to keep it shorter, is the one reason why they're so hateful is because they want to drink their liquid. And another reason, which I did keep in the summary, they're hateful because they're crammed in a small space. They want to get out of there. They want to escape, but they don't even try to escape. They have, they have settled with the fact that this is where they're going to be. But so, they so hang on. So, so they have 
no brains, but they are intelligent in some way. They have some sort of awareness. They have sensations. They they feel. Okay. They feel their thirst. They want to drink. I want to drink. They feel hate, anger. They fight. It's this discomfort. They feel. They react. But they don't have brains to think with. When you say no brains, do you mean like like no nothing up there at all? Or no like brain an organ. Animal <laughs> animal level intelligence or just just less not? less than animal less than animal. I less? was gonna say these are like robot almost like almost biological. And you know when I was doing this, it reminded me of stories that I've heard about the little grays that they would supposedly be like biological machines that don't have a mind or a soul i've heard about that and this reminded me of that because yeah, here that was my first question are they yeah. biological androids of some sort but they're not biological but, but they're not biological they're not totally. biological rv told me these are not biological beings but they're they're living beings yet they're 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 not this is something very different like a robotic or artificial intelligence <sighs> Or, no, or, or, they don't have intelligence. Not even intelligence. Just an, not an, even an awareness. intelligence. Person. Awareness, yes. They have their awareness of I want to drink. They have their awareness, I don't want to be here. They fight each other. I saw them kicking each other. I saw them biting each other. They don't have a mouth, but somehow. <laughs> so let's keep going. Um so they hate each other. One reason was because they want to drink their liquid. Other reason is they're crammed in a small space. They really want to get out of here, but they're not trying to escape. They so much would like to escape and get out, but they have settled with, this is where I am. So they're living in this hatred of their condition. They hate being there. They bite each other out of hate, friction between personalities. Moving quickly, running. They were running real fast in their madness, in their mind. This chaos, hectic. I wouldn't say that they're suffering, but this is this is their existence. It's really tragic. I had the feeling during the session, I didn't really write it because it wasn't RV data. It was more what I was thinking. I had the sense that these, it's like, you know, when you take like bacteria or fungus, and you try to incorporate it into electronics so that you're abusing or using biology inside of a machine and it sits there enslaved. You know, people are trying to build things like that. It This was the sense I had that these sort of living beings have been stuffed inside of this machine to be part of its operations i will describe still i'm not finished what they do there their function there's something really tragic about it i almost feel like i would want to rescue them they suffer in a sense they're uncomfortable they have a um, discomfort um now we get to what they actually do which is bizarre beyond any anything bizarre they have some kind of fabric shoes. So when they walk, it forms friction with the surface. They jump and it creates sparks. They ignite things with their bodies. They rub against each other, which makes friction. They move items around and push switches and activate ignition sparks. And they push blocks, which ignite sparks too. And then I see a big fire comes down the path along the line. They form friction on the exterior of their bodysuits like a static electricity. They communicate that way by making the friction. Um, at the end of this page, we'll, we will find out what the friction actually does. This is, this is bizarre. Let's enjoy it. Uh, it's very rarely that something this bizarre comes along that we yeah, get to enjoy. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their bodies do not form any waste product. Only the ignition that dissipates heat is their only waste emission. So if you're thinking like uh, conservation of energy, if they're ingesting some kind of a liquid nutrition, 
you'd think that their body has some kind of a waist. Well, the friction that they do dissipates heat and that's a form of waste emission. We do that too. As humans, we emit, we radiate heat also, which come, came originally from our food. We do that too. Maybe not through friction so much, but so these friction makers, as they are called, they read a lot of libraries of books with instruction manuals. They read fast, then they go to sleep and rest. They do not remember what they read. That is why they have to go read it all over again. They read, then they sleep, then they wake up to do it all over again. They have their own sleeping chambers, which are inside of the resonance chamber tube. They do not try to escape or get out. I already discussed that. These life forms are called friction makers. They are, these beings are reading devices. They're beings perhaps, but you would say they are a reading device. A reading device. Yes. They soak up information in libraries. Their minds remember nothing. They go to sleep to reset and unignite sparks so that they forget everything they read. They forget the information and they reset back to knowing nothing. So they seem like short-term information storage, which is made to not remember long-term. So this makes them sound like biological, which they're not, but they also sound like part of a machine, part of electronics, components of information handling. It's as if they are I was thinking, doing this, I was thinking, are these pieces in a computer information storage or information processing or information transfer? Are they little bits in a machine? That's what they remind me of. Last part to read. They sleep inside the resonance chamber. They generate heat. The heat goes underneath the flattened disk. And the heat under the flattened disk causes the flattened disk to rise upwards, riding on air currents and rising because of hot air. So now we came around about back to that. So you see how, let me finish here. I write, they are not humans. They make the pink magnetism flow. They keep operations mechanisms going. The rubbing causes a friction which generates heat. This is how they warm their bodies and also they jump up and down to release more heat. They travel on a road, riding on a wagon with wheels and go to the yellow light. One was lying on its back on a moving wheeled cart. So we finished reading, we can go here. So these things, one thing that I see them doing is they, they rub against each other against the floor, creates static electricity. And somehow this creates a heat and this heat goes under the flattened disc, creates a heat under outside the disc and this heat makes the craft rise up. Bizarre beyond belief. So it's like they're part of the machinery and they're kind of like living beings, but they're not biological and they're not human, but they're part of the machinery. It's like having these little mini workers in the craft inside of the machine room where they have to do this. And they don't like it. They suffer. They feel miserable. And they, so for some reason, they don't have a memory. The things that they learn about, I think they learn operation mechanisms, we said. They learn it short term, then they go to sleep. And when they sleep, they forget everything they learned the, the day before and they're blank minds again. They don't know anything. So everything they learn one day, after they go to sleep and wake up, they don't know any of it anymore. They're blank again. They, then they have to read it all over again. There's something very tragic about this. I really feel it. there is a tragedy, an exploitation. It, it must be a form of exploitation, but I don't think we're in a position to judge. We simply describe this is what we had. It's not my right to 
make a judgment if it's how I feel about it. This is what I encountered in there. That's um, fascinating. And, you know, I'm not afraid to make a judgment. I, that sounds like slavery. You know, that sounds, yes. it, it sounds, yes. it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and they hate, they're, they're constantly fighting. They kick, they bite, they yell at each other. They're screaming at each other. What kind of a life is that? It's yeah, so hectic. I mean, that's what happens when you put too many rats in a cage. They fight and mm. tear at each other. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, overpopulation uh, can, do, can do that. Okay, so um, uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what they're reading? Or, or what, what's, the, what's the library? I mean, we're talking about books. Are we talking about downloading? Instruction manuals. I wrote it here. Okay, okay. They read lots of library. The friction makers read instruction manuals. Now, now, when you say manuals, is this a text? Is this is this uh, electric? Is this well, how how is this information? Uh, you know, wh wh where is it contained? I didn't look. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't what, look. an instruction manual for what? I didn't look. Okay. All okay. I need to do to answer those questions is to take one finger and to brush it slowly, gently across even the word instruction manual finger across will tell me but i didn't do that because there's just so many things to look at yeah yeah and, this and is they the were not the main this, this is the condensed version of what you got you had you had a, a, a much longer text right at one point yeah that was the summary but the summary contains everything almost 99 percent of the data but there is a longer text but it's very repetitive and there are things that i can take away because for instance initially i call something a can and later i call it the resonance chamber that means calling it a can becomes redundant after a while so i mean the summary has everything almost in it um we have one more picture that's the last picture so i've drawn the seats it was weird <laughs> That's that's the seating. So it's this narrow uh, space, and there's all these padded, dense padded cushions lined up inside of that space. It's open on the top. It's kind of like you you have to squeeze yourself to to sit down there, and your nose, if you sat there, would be facing along the line of seats, not into the wall there, and several people or whatever could sit there in this seat <laughs> i've never you, seen sofa like that <laughs> did, did you see anybody sitting there i think i saw someone squeezed down in there i wasn't sure yeah but... so no, no idea if the operators were human or you know grays or anything else i could have i could have put more effort into looking at the people's beings but i really focused on the craft so yeah. something had to give i think we can stop screen sharing how do i do that Frega, stop there okay and wow Nina, thank you so much that was beyond <laughs> fascinating it was wild taking us on this <sighs> incredible ride uh through your session and this and awesome data that you were getting uh, on the, 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 the craft, uh, you know, it's interaction with water, the, the crazy uh, friction maker beings, uh, yes. you know, that, that may be uh, enslaved in some way or, mm -hmm. or something like that, uh, captives in any case, uh, and forced to uh, generate friction, uh, apparently, as, as bizarre as that sounds for such an exotic craft. Um, and, uh, and also having some sort of interaction with data, uh, and absorbing data instruction manuals, but then being wiped clean and forced to uh, reread that, that that's so, it's so like a, like a nightmare trip, you know, that's just crazy. That's crazy. Uh, well, what are your, what are your overall thoughts on it all? Now, now that you know the target, what, what do you think? I don't know what to think. I just know the data I had. I still, I, 
is it human or extraterrestrial? I don't know what the heck, I don't know what that was. I just, now in hindsight, as usual, I wish I could, I wish I would have spent some more days on it, but it's kind of scary to work a lot of hours on a session before you know if you're even in the right place, because you, you fear that if I put so much into it and it turns into nothing, if I failed, but in this one, I knowing now I could have kept going, but you know, there's so many things I could have kept looking at, you know, the beings obviously, and the craft some more and the, and the technologies and physics concepts that I came across, a lot of it was surprisingly familiar to me, such as, I guess, magnetism, thermodynamics a bit, but a lot of it was things I've never seen or heard, like the concept of resonance and and the time changes because of the magnet, the time changes. I loved encountering those things. The beings, uh, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we need to start a campaign. Free the friction makers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I had. I'm glad I did it. Thank you for tasking me the Tic Tac. Well, well, thank you so much for spending so much time getting this amazing, uh, if very puzzling data. <laughs> uh, I, I really, I can't tell you how weird that data is. That's um, weird about it, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got, you got resonance chambers, you got friction makers, uh, you have possible time travel involved. Um, uh, you know, you got the the two prongs that you know roughly correlate to the 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 tic tac uh, prongs. Yes. Um, yeah, just is such interesting, interesting information, Anita. Uh, it, uh, you have your own channel, right? Your own YouTube yes. channel. Yes. All right, I'm going to link to it in the, in the description below. And I encourage everybody to go check out Anita's uh, YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more of these videos below. So everybody give a big thank you to Anita uh, <laughs> for this awesome information. Uh, big thumbs up. Go to her channel. Uh, is there any other way for people to contact you or anything else people should know about that? Mm -hmm. Well, the YouTube channel is a good place to start. I think I'm going to link everything else I have from remote viewing from there. So. All right, great. Well, <laughs> guys, give Anita a big thank you and a good reaction to this video. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we can knock out some of the other uh, 10 yes. targets that I have listed. I think you're, I think you're going to like these targets, guys. So, uh, yeah, so let's, let's uh, give a big shout out to Anita and go follow her channel and like and thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Jack out.